This chapter made me speechless. The events that transpired weren't much, but the events that happened were astonishing of what we learned. Instead of a chapter review, I will do a speedrun of the chapter and comment on small things and then discuss the main points. Um, but first, I want to say that this was a good cover page for no other reason than the cool art we see. This cover page is a continuation of the beach theme from last cover spread that was with the Straw Hat Boys. The chapter is titled The Attempted Murder of the Celestial Dragons and there were witnesses so it should end up in the news. Flame Emperor Sabo does his flame things, Julia Bonnie You'll teams up with Sabo, trial. Sabo stole the slave collar keys, Bonnie trusts the revolutionaries with Kuma, which didn't work out in the end, Sabo holds some of Karasu's suit to summon a crow, Bonnie is shocked like I was cause how does what? that work? Bro, what are you talking about? Karasu's crow delivers the keys and tells everyone to escape. Not sure how crows flying in the castle wouldn't alarm the guards. Sabo seems to still have a mission even though he has completed all their objectives. Bonnie said she was off to Egghead to meet Vegapunk to fix Kuma's memories. God no, fodder knights show up as Sabo and Bonnie get away. Sabo got that heat in him to hold Bonnie like that. The guards talk about how the revolutionaries saw the phantom room, which makes people disappear in the castle. Sabo is confused since he doesn't know what they are referring to and probably wants to check it out. I think Bonnie and Sabo jumped out of a window because of the text bubble placement here. Bonnie and Sabo depart from one another, so I'm not sure what was Bonnie's purpose in all of this. What was the point of meeting with Sabo? I'll talk about the Eam stuff collectively later for consistency. We pan to the Pangea Castle Courtyard. Sure Hoshi is being captured by St. Charles, and everyone runs away while the Fishman Princes try to save her. Kuma, under the control of St. Charles, is ordered to blast them. The people running away get blasted. The next panel we see smoke from the people running away, but they seem fine. This durability is crazy for fodder running away. Money solves the Celestials' problems, so they want to get rid of the Fishman Princes and just throw money at Fishman Island to solve the problem. We see Mosgard give permission to do some smacking to St. Charles and tells off the Princes because they are royals and let the pirates who are independent from responsibility to do the dirty work. St. Charles even wants to kill St. Mosgard for slapping him. Scum are still scum, and that's good to know. Nail and hammer combo attack from Sai and Leo absolutely obliterates St. Charles. The fodders are somehow still alive and witness the attempted murder of a celestial dragon. Mind you, all this happened so quickly before Kuma could shoot a laser from his hand. Kuma gets manhandled by a bigger man when Morley shows up and he scoops up Kuma to run away. We love seeing punching bags being punchy bags. Look on the mask with my boy. This is peak One Piece. Okay, now we get to the main point of this chapter. Cutting to the throne room, King Cobra talks with the Gorosei about the 20 kingdoms and how they are the celestial dragons and the creators of the world. The swords around the empty throne serves as an example to say none of the 20 kingdoms would become the dictator amongst them. All evidence of the previous reigns before the foundation of the world government was removed and the, and the families that were handpicked replaced the 20 kingdoms which hold power to this day. But Arabasta's ruler, Queen Lily of House Nefertari, did not become a celestial dragon and continue her rule. So only 20 swords were placed around the empty throne. The Gorosei hurriedly replied, showing that this last comment about the 19 swords is of importance. However, all of Alabasta's texts after the void century have one thing in common, that her name wasn't mentioned once. Hold up, let me take a breather. This is heavily, and I mean very heavily, implying that Emu might be Queen Lily because she did not return. Also, the comment about the 19 swords, which make the Gorosei uneasy to respond right after, shows that these 19 swords aren't there to symbolize the vows of the 19 kingdoms to have no dictators sitting upon the throne. But in reality, they are placed to symbolize that they would not betray the ruler of the 20th kingdom which would be Emu.
But that's just a theory, a one-piece theory. Queen Lily never returned to Arabasta, and the country fell to her younger brother, so Cobra asked for any records which the Gorosei basically say, I'm not telling you. But in the panel, when the Gorosei speak about Queen Lily, they show Emu and her garden. Cobra says, if I won't get out of this alive, better play the big cards and ask what the meaning of the D is. Bro is just waiting to die. But he says that there is a short letter penned by the queen, which was passed down generation to generation. So scrap my whole theory. It's more likely that Queen Lily was the founder of the D-Clan and is actually against the world government. Hmm, but I think it could still be possible that Queen Lily is being controlled, or has to be the necessary evil for the sake of the world. I guess I'll have to wait and see what the contents of the letter was. Finally, Emu shows up in front of King Cobra. Huh? What? Why? For what purpose? To say one word, Lily? If Emu is Lily, are the Nefertari stupid? Is the One Piece to make the Nefertari smarter? Why is Emu showing up? To flex they are on the throne? <sighs> Cobra just explained the empty throne lore. Then he sees the lies of the world government crumble in front of his eyes as Emu sits on the throne. Nice one, Emu. This was a great time to reminisce about Lily. Also, not sure why, the throne talks and says thump. This thump sound is probably from Emu sitting, but the thump could mean doki, like a heart beating. Connecting back to the drums of liberation, and maybe how Emu might have liked Lily in the past, and that's why they are carrying a picture of Vivi when they are first introduced. That's all for this chapter. I know it was a short review, but I'm just kind of speechless right now of the whole chapter, and I need more time to process and see where this goes. I'm trying out this VR model so you guys can see something while I'm talking, and I hope you guys like it. It's inspired by Carrot's Su Long form. Thanks for watching, let Oda cook, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.